Hi everyone, what's up? I'm back with another PySpark coding question, which is commonly asked in data engineer interviews. The question I'm going to solve today is mentioned on the screen. I'm going to show you what this question is about and how to solve this. So please watch the video till the end. If you're interested in practicing more such PySpark questions, then you can check out the videos in the i button. And if you want to watch the entire playlist on different data engineering topics, then the link is present in the description. If you're new to the channel, then please push the subscribe button as it will help my channel grow. I post videos every week to help you clear your next interview. Also, if you found this video useful, then please click the like button and share it with your friends. Now let's get started with the video. So the question is, from the given JSON data, find the result, calculate total amount spent by each customer, find the most expensive product bought by each customer. Calculate the average age of customers who made purchases greater than $300. So the data is also given by the interviewer and as you can see this is in JSON format. Basically a dictionary of multiple fields. Uh, so all these curly braces at the start represent a single row. So this is one row then uh, I think this is another row and finally the last one starts from here. So this is the final row. So in this particular video, I'll show you how you can read this kind of data. And that is the part one actually. And in the second part, you will get come to know how we can solve these questions. So watch the video till the end because this is going to be really interesting. In order to read the above data, you will have to create this sort of schema using struct type and struct field. You can always use infer schema as well in the spark.read.json command, but in interviews, you will be expected to write this schema in, in this way. Um, it's always good to have the knowledge of how you create a schema using struct type and struct field. So in order to do so, first we'll see what columns I have. So let's go to the first row and let's see, we have name, this is one column, then we have age, and then you can see purchases, which has a square bracket in front of it. So whenever you see square bracket, that means this purchases or any column is a uh, array type. Basically, it might have multiple indexes. So if I go inside this, uh, the first index is this, the second index is this. And inside each index, there are further fields. So product ID, product name, these are, all these are different fields. And because there are multiple indexes, so that's why you see there are two values of this product ID, two values of this product name. Similarly, if I go down, you can see this purchases is again, uh, just like the above row, it is part of the second row. And this time it has three indexes, basically three rows inside purchases. So in order to tackle this, you have to do something like this. So struct field name and string type because uh, name has only a single value and it is of string format. Similarly, age is also a single value, but here it is of integer format. You, there's, there are no quotes here. If it, if it was something like 30.0, some other column, not H, but it was like 30.0, you can always use double type or float type. Now coming to the third column that is purchases. So purchases, as I said, has square bracket in front of it. So first you have to use array type. And because there is again a set of curly braces inside of the square bracket. So I've used this struct type. Finally, inside these curly braces, I have different fields like product ID, product name, price, quantity, all these are, if you can see either string type, so this is a double type or float type, whatever suits. And this is again integer type, this is again a string type. So ac accordingly, inside the struct field, I have mentioned each of this column. Take a close look at this schema if it is new to you, because this is something you should always know before appearing a, you know, PySpark interview. Once I have the schema ready, I'll just use spark .spark parallelize. So this I'm doing because this is entirely uh, a JSON data inside a string. So you see these triple quotes, this means a multi-line string. So we need to parallelize and convert it into an RDD. Now on top of this RDD, we apply this, uh, this custom schema we created. And further, I'm doing a spark.read.json because I know the in underlying data is a JSON type. Finally, I have the data in this way. You can see the result. We have Jane Smith, Alice Johnson, John Doe, and these are the ages. And these are all the array or the all the indexes inside purchases. 
so you can see purchase has two index for the um, row one and inside each index now there are set of values same goes for the second row here the purchases has three index or three rows and inside each row of purchases there is a different value so if i go to the question again we have to find out something related to these fields okay now what i want to do is i want to bring out these field in the open basically adjacent to these columns so that will make my life more easier to solve the question in order to do so basically in order to flatten this array type column or bring out the columns inside of array to the to the actual data frame i have to use the explode function so what i've done is i've created an exploded df first i've selected name age and i'm applying the explode function on the column purchases basically our array type column explode function only works with the array type column if i apply on any other it might give you null so i'm calling this exploded uh, functions outcome as purchases and uh, i'm sorry i'm calling this uh, exploded functions outcome as purchase which is the alias and further i have to only select what columns i want to bring out of this array type so i've done purchase dot product id and alias is also product id purchase dot product name alias is also product name well i've included this alias because i wanted to show you that you can always rename the underlying columns if you don't want to rename just include or just write it this way purchase dot price so this will return you a column named price purchase dot quantity will return you a column named quantity finally when i have no role of this purchase basically the exploded you know exploded column of this purchases column so i have dropped this and this is my final table so i have name i have h and this product id product name price quantity purchase date these are all part of the purchases array which now i have in front of me to for further you know further calculation or further any operation i want to apply see just notice one thing this james smith uh, column let's go here so james smith column had single row and inside that single row you can see uh, there were two rows of so let me open so there were two rows inside this purchases for james smith now if i come to this particular data frames outcome there are two rows totally in the actual data frame where the um, underlying values of the purchases arrays columns are written so product id b001 b002 same goes for alice johnson so see there are three rows now here which were first uh, previously present inside the array so as you can see these three are now part of the actual data frame that is outside of the array now so once i have this i can easily calculate i can easily do any operation or whatever the question wants me to do now coming to the actual question calculate the total amount spent by each customer so in order to do so what i've done is i've taken the expired df and i've created a new column called net amount which is multiplication of price and quantity then because i have to find a certain value for each customer so i've done a group by on this name column now i'm assuming this name column is unique in my data set so after doing a group by on name column i've done a sum on the net amount basically this column i created and i'm calling it total amount spent so this way you have uh, each customer and its total amount so alice johnson paid this much john doe paid this much and james smith uh, paid this one so moving to the next question find the most expensive product brought by bought by each customer in order to do so first i have uh, you know find out the maximum price paid by each product so how to do that on the exported df again i'm grouping on the uh, column that is name and i'm calling this as temp name and i'm applying the max function on the price so what this returns me for each customer what is the maximum price that particular customer has paid so once i have this temp df that that has the maximum price i am joining it back to the exploded df and i'm doing an inner join the join keys are price and name so basically each customer's name i'm matching then i'm seeing which price or which product's price is equal to the maximum price that is paid by that particular customer so once this join is executed i have selected name maximum price product name and purchase date so as you can see this tells me that james smith's most maximum purchase or maximum price or maximum money spent on tablet is this 399 399 and the purchase date is this and accordingly the other customers data is as follow 
Moving on to the another last question. Calculate the average age of customers who made purchases greater than three hundred dollar. So in this case, I have taken the Explorer DF and I filtered on the price. So all the price that is greater than three hundred, I have selected only those data. Now I am selecting the name and age, and I am taking distinct of it. So the customer might have made a purchase of similar value, but we are only interested in the distinct rows for those values. So here it is. We have James Smith and John Doe. So these two customers made purchases which are greater than three hundred. Now the question tells me that calculate the average age of the customers who made purchases greater than three hundred. Right now I have all the customers. Who made purchases greater than three hundred? Now I have to take the average of the age column of you know each row. So here is that uh, result data frame. So high value customer DF dot group by dot average of the age column, and I'm calling it average age high value customers. If I uh, you know display the result, it is twenty nine. So basically, it is the average of twenty eight and thirty. So moving on to the final part, which is create a final summary report. So here, what what I'll do is, so I have the total uh, spent DF, I have the most expensive D8, and I have the average age DF. Basically, the three data frames that I created previously in these commands. So I'm joining all of them accordingly, and as you can see, this is my final result. So this has the all the you know uh, questions result in one data frame. So you can get a question like this, and uh, which in addition the uh, interviewer can ask you that you know. Uh, summarize the question into a single data frame, and this is how you do it. So I hope you understand how I solved each and every part of this question, and I hope you understood the functioning of Explode and you know how you can read a JSON data like this. If you are interested in knowing similar kind of PySpark questions, which are very important for data engineering interviews, you can always check the link in the description and in the i button. For now, that's it. So that's it for this video. If you found it useful, then please share it with your friends and like the video. In the coming few weeks, I will I have planned many such videos on PySpark and SQL interview questions. So stay tuned for them. And if you have not subscribed, then please press the subscribe button. And I'll see you next time.